In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a working Minecraft tank, just like either of these two fine specimens here or any other tank you might see. The mod pack is in the Discord server linked in the video description. This tutorial will not work unless you have the provided mod pack. Before we start building, I actually want to go over the two main blocks which are going to be used in our transmission. First off, we have the inverted clutch. And what this will do is it will stop power from being transmitted through it until you give it a redstone signal. Next, we have the gear shift. This one's pretty simple. It will spin. When we give it a redstone signal, it will reverse directions. This is the most fundamental part of our transmission. When we have a clutch and a gear shift together, we can not only control when it spins, but also what direction. So this will allow us to control basically all the things inside of our tank. To start off with actually building, let's first start with the engine, which is of course going to give power to the entire tank. I'm going to use a modular diesel engine. You can also use a normal diesel engine if you really wanted to. The difference is that one has the, the fuel input on the top, the other has it on the bottom. Uh, usually the modular one is going to be more convenient because it has it on the top. It's going to add a cogwheel, a mechanical pump, fluid pipe, and then a fluid tank. This is about the simplest engine you can get. And what this will do is when the engine spins, it will turn this cogwheel, which will turn this pump, and it will pump the engine with fuel so we can self-sustain. Let's also fill up the fluid tank with some gasoline. Let's quickly go over how a tank actually moves. So that's the part we're going to be building next. When both tracks turn forwards, of course, the tank goes forwards. When both tracks go backwards, the tank goes backwards. But in order to turn, one track goes forwards and the other track goes backwards. So what we need here is a way to control when the tracks are spinning and what direction both of them are spinning independently. The easiest way to do this is with the inverted clutch. I'm also going to use a brass gear box in order to split the input into both sides, which is where our tracks will be. And I'm also going to right click to reverse the direction of these two sides here. I'm going to put back the clutch. And then let's also put our gear shifts. So now with the setup, we can control when the track is spinning with this clutch. Then we can also independently control whether this side is going forwards or backwards with the gear shift, and whether this side is going forwards or backwards. And believe it or not, that is all your tank needs to move already done. So let's move on to the gun and the turret, which need to be able to turn left and right and up and down. I'm going to use the same inverted clutch and gear shift, just like this. So of course, we are now going to be able to independently control when they're spinning and what direction they're spinning in. I'm also going to add a redstone resistor and this will allow us to slow down the gun and turret because the input coming out of the engine is way too fast. I'm going to extend this out one and do a gear box just to change direction and do a face bearing which is how our turret will actually spin. So of course this side is controlling the turret, this side is going to control the gun in order to get this rotational input from here into the gun, which is going to be on a completely different ship in the turret, of course, we're going to use a energy transmitter. Just put it right here, and we'll deal with it later. Now that is actually pretty much the entire tank done, at least the hull. Now let's the track, so I'm going to extend it out one. I'm going to add a medium sprocket track, but you can of course use whatever you want, three kinds. And then we're also going to have a susp suspension track. Again, there are three kinds to this one. You can also use the wrench from create to toggle rendering so you can hide every other track. But sometimes if you have too many road wheels, it just looks a little funny. So this is good for just making it look a little bit better. Now it's time to actually add some blocks for tank. So I'm going to use some hard armor. Uh, you can use whatever color you want. I'm just going to be using the default kind of gray. And I'm literally just going to basically fill in the entire tank because we want as much armor we can get. Leave just a little bit of space wherever you want. I'm going to need this in a second. You can also use copycats like this half layer or any of these that you see here. And what these will do is you can basically just put whatever block you want in it, and it will take the look of that block, but in the shape of wherever you have it at. Now that the hull's looking good, we can move on to the turret. So I'm going to build up off the fizz bearing, which if you remember is where our, our turret is going to be actually rotating around. So building off it is a nice way to just make sure it stays centered and all that. I'm gonna use a steel medium cannon, so we're going to take our steel medium cannon barrel, build it out a little bit, and then also let's get a recoil barrel in there, which you don't need, but nice to have it. And you will need a uh, steel medium cannon breech. Make sure they're all pointing this way when you place them. Aside from the breech, the breech will you point this way. Otherwise, it may not assemble correctly, and that's going to be a pain. So when we put it all together, this gun is going to actually sit right here, pretty flat and close to our hull. Um, now, in order to make the gun actually work, of course, we're going to need a cannon mount. So let's put that right here. 
two blocks down. So you can see the shaft right here is lining up with the gun horizontally. And you may be saying, wait, if the gun is going to go right here and the mount is two blocks lower, won't the mount be inside of the hull? And the answer is yes, but it'll be fine. Don't worry about it right now. It'll make sense a little bit later. In order to actually assemble the gun, we're going to use just a normal lever. You can, you can also use a redstone block, but I like being able to turn it on and off. Now it's also a good time to just test it. If you right click it, you should see the whole thing change color a little bit. And you should also be able to see if you press F3B, it'll turn on hitboxes and you should see the hitbox all around the cannon. Let's leave that unassembled for now. Let's work on building up around the turret a little bit. Now I'm actually leaving a pretty good amount of room inside the turret because we're going to add an auto loader. And this will load the gun for us and make sure we don't have to load it ourselves, which is an absolute pain. What we're going to need is a depot. This will be where the arm, which will be loading the gun, will grab the ammo out of. So we'll put this anywhere. We'll add a hopper to feed into the depot. And of course, we're going to need the arm and a cogwheel to power it. I'm going to put this cogwheel right here, say, if I can actually get it. I'm going to hold the arm in my hand, right click the depot, right click the mount of the cannon, and I'm going to right click right here next to the cogwheel so we can actually get powered. And so now this arm is going to take shells out of here, put them in the gun, but we need to power the arm still somehow. The easy way to do this is to take power from the engine in our hull. Let's put another transmitter, which will basically just beam energy from here to wherever it needed to be. So put one right next to the engine, and then we'll also put one on the cogwheel. So the power will go from the engine into here, get wirelessly transferred up into here, and then go into our cog, and then finally into our arm, so we can actually load our gun. You may remember, we already have a transmitter down here. This is going to turn our gun up and down. So in order to differentiate between the loader and the gun, all we need to do is just name our transmitter. So we're going to name this one loader, let's say. Name this one loader, exactly the same. And now these two are on the same channel, basically, and they will transfer between each other. Let's also name the gun, uh, gun, let's say. And let's also put it on the mount itself so we can actually get transferred. And of course, we'll also name this one gun. In order to actually put the whole thing together, we're going to take our schematic and quill, and we're going to select the entire turret. You can use the control and scroll wheel to move, change the size of the box, make sure it includes the entire turret. Once you've made sure everything is contained inside of the light blue box, just right click again, and then we can save it as, let's say, tutorial tank turret. And now let's also do the same thing for the hull, of course. Name it tutorial tank hull. Now take any block, place it. I'm going to grab a ship creator. Make sure it's a ship creator and not the mini ship creator. That will not do what we want it to do. Take this stick, right click, and you'll see in the bottom left, Shipified. Let's take our schematic and place it right on top. An easy way to tell if you're actually placing it on the ship or not is to just place it. Don't actually place the blocks yet, but just place the, the schematic. And now you'll see if we turn it off center with the Gravitron, the schematic will follow it. And so clearly this schematic is not on the block grid of the world. It's on this ship. So let's place it now. Let's actually start the engine first and make sure the tracks work before we put the turret on. I'm going to break this block real quick. We'll put on the engine and reverse the direction. And the engine should start right up. I reverse the direction because if you place it in don't reverse the direction, the engine will break because this motor is spinning the opposite direction as the engine wants to spin. So no matter what you do, it'll break. In order to get around this, we just need to place the motor and then quickly reverse the direction so it spins the same way as the engine. You may have realized we don't actually have a way to control the clutch and gear shift and everything that's back here in order to make the tank move. How are we going to control it? The answer is using cables. This will allow us to take our controller and directly control the blocks inside of our tank without the need for links or anything. There are two kinds of controllers. There's the normal linked and the tweet controller. The tweet one is a little bit more complicated, but it's definitely worth it for controlling your tank. I'm going to show both though. Starting off with the link controller, we're going to take a link controller hub place it anywhere inside of our tank, and also grab a cable, right click, and you'll see at the bottom, select channel, key up. What that's telling us is what channel is currently selected. So if we scroll, you'll see it changes. So that we're currently editing key up, which is just up or forward. When we press forward, we want to think go forward. So we're just going to adjust the clutch. If you remember, we'll make both tracks go. 
without any changes in direction. If you scroll, it'll go to key down. So we'll do the gear shift again, or the clutch again rather. So both tracks do spin, but now we want to reverse the direction of both tracks so we can actually go backwards. For key left, we want the tracks to spin again, but we also want to reverse one of the tracks. So for key left, we want the right track to go forward, the left track to go backwards. So let's reverse the left track. And then key right will be just the opposite. If you're using a tweak controller, the benefit being you can control it using both WASD, as you can see here, but also arrow keys. So you can control both the turret and the hull at the same time. With the link controller, you only have four inputs, technically six. So you'll only be able to control either the hull or the turret, not both at the same time. Using the tweak controller is not that much more complicated. It's definitely worth learning. All you need is a tweak controller hub. I'm just putting it here. And then you'll see axis left X, axis left X minus, axis left Y plus. And what this corresponds to is the channels, as you can see. Let me just click onto the axis settings. And then you go to right here. It'll tell you the name of the bind. Do you know that in order to use your keyboard for this, you're going to go press escape, go to here, general configs, and then press use custom mappings. This is usually turned off by default. So I want to turn it on. Make sure you save it also. Now, if you just press W, A, S, D, whatever you want, it'll show you what your direction is actually going. So if I press W, which is forward, it'll show left axis Y minus, because the thing is going down, as you can see. So let's do, let's find left axis Y down. This will be forward. If we press S, it goes up, so that is left axis Y plus. So we'll find left axis Y plus. And this will be our reverse button. If I press D, it'll do left axis X plus. So we'll do left axis X plus. And this will be our turn right bind. And then of course, left axis X minus will be our left bind. Now, either tweaked or linked, in order to bind our controller to this block, which has all the mappings on it, just right click. There's a little sound, it's pretty quiet. You might not be able to hear it, but it is there. It's probably more audible in game once you're actually, you know, you're following the tutorial. And after that, we should be able to drive our tank. You will notice it is completely reversed. It is going the wrong direction. We press forward, it goes backwards. We press backwards, it goes forward. Left, it goes right. Right, it goes left. So what do we do? We want to reverse all of the inputs into the tracks. And instead of rebinding everything with the cables, what we can instead do is just replace these gear shifts with inverse gear shifts, which are the same thing they just have a default reverse direction. So pick this, replace it, like this, replace it. You don't, you don't need to rebind anything. It'll just still maintain your connection to these blocks. So now, as you can see, we press forward, goes forward, back, it goes back, left, left, and right, right. That is working beautifully. Now let's actually assemble the turret. Let's place a block right here on the fizz bearing. Right click to assemble it. And you can see it flicker for a second. And again, if you press F3B to show hitboxes, you'll see it has a little colored hitbox with a purple and a red. You may have noticed the input for the turret is actually over here from this direction, but the input on the bearing is done below. After you assemble the bearing, you can actually take a wrench and right click on the edges to rotate the bearing. And now it will accept input from this side, but it will turn, it'll still turn this way, which was the original direction when we assembled it. So let's grab our schematic and schematic table. Let's upload the tutorial tank turret and place that on this block. It will probably place too high and it's also placed too far back, as you can see. In order to fix this, all we need to do is place some blocks coming off of our turret and then place the schematic onto these new blocks until it's where we want it to be. I think it needs to be one more forward actually. Now alt scroll over to move Y, control scroll to move it down, and then just place. You can see the turret is turning a bit by itself, and that is because we have the cannon mount from earlier clipping into the hull. It doesn't like that. So what we can do is slash give ourselves Valkyrian skies, if I can spell. Ship pair no clip. Right click, right click, both the hole and the turret. And now it is good to go. It is no longer clipping. These ships no longer have collision with each other. So they can have intersecting blocks and it won't care. Now do note this is an op only item. You can save it to a hop bar like I've done. I have it right here. 
Now we also need to set up the links and the cables and everything for the turret, but the turret's kind of in the way actually. So what we can do is pick up the hull with right click, left click to make it static so it won't move. And then what we need to do now is pull the turret off the hull. To make this easier, we can grab some ballast from Eureka and place these. These are basically just heavy blocks, really heavy blocks. And this will make it easier to pull the turret off. We'll grab it with right click and just fly up until it comes off. Left click to make it static so it won't move. We're going to need another link controller hub for a separate controller. If you're using the tweak controller, you're basically just going to, have to follow the same steps. On the same hub, you only need to use one hub because you only have one controller. But now you're just following the binds for the arrow keys or whatever you have it set to and checking these binds to cable it up. In our case, let's take the cable from here. Let's go key up. So key up is going to move the gun up. At least that's what we wanted to do. It's so going to have the gun turn and we're going to have it go the normal direction. We're key down, we're going to have the gun turn again, but we're also going to reverse the direction. Key left, we want the turret to turn left. So we're going to turn the turret, but don't reverse the direction. And then key right, we can reverse the direction. Now is also a good time to cable up the gun. We're going to scroll to key jump, which is just spacebar. And then we're going to do it on the front face of the cannon mount, which is how we'll actually be able to control it shooting. Now let's grab this. Let's put everything back. And then now we can test it. So I'm grabbing my link controller, right clicking the hub to bind it. And now we can turn the turret left and right and move the gun up and down. But first we have to assemble it. I'm just going to flick the lever you placed earlier if you can find it. You may have to break some blocks to get to it, but just flick this lever and it should assemble right up, back, and now the gun will turn up and down. Obviously, this is not correct. You can see only the back part of the gun is turning. This is because the rest of the gun didn't get assembled correctly. So let's put that back. All we need to do to fix this is just replace these blocks. Very simple. Let's reassemble that one more time. And now the gun will turn up and down. Now you will notice, again, not only is it the wrong direction, you can see I'm pressing left, but it's turning right. I'm pressing up, but it's going down. It's also way, way too fast. But we already have something in place to slow it down. We have these resistors here. All we need to do is give them a small redstone signal and it will slow them down based on how much redstone we give it. I'll take my analog lever and flick it. And however much it's flicked, that is how much redstone power it will give. So I'll go all the way and then shift click to minus one. And also to inverse it, we can replace the gear shifts with inverted gear shifts. So now the turret and gun should work beautifully. Much slower, much more manageable pace. That is looking great. Now for a loader, let's actually give it some ammo and then we can test it. Grab the ammo from the creative tab. Do not search for say medium cannon shell. They'll all pop up here, but these will not work. I'll show you right now. We'll take one, we'll put it here, open the breach, and then it'll start loading. When you fire it, okay, I lied. In previous versions, it would not work if you grabbed it from the search bar, but it works now. Just grab your ammo from anywhere, put it all in the hopper. It'll go to the depot. Make sure your gun is open. A lot of times when your gun's not loading, it's because it's closed. So if I, if I close it, the arm won't touch it. Once I open it, it'll load it for us. And now the gun is actually working. Now, how do we save this? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to do all the setup every single time. Let's add a network block and or uh, backup block, actually. Put this anywhere on the hull. And so when we save it, we won't need to re-cable everything. Now, to actually save it, we will take the tool gun. Go to schematics, as you can see here. We're going to left click this hole, and you'll see it pops up with this thing, which is an outline of our tank. Press tab again, go to save, and save as Oriole tank, or whatever you want to call it, of course. Now we can place this anytime we want, and it will pop up for us. If you'll see the gun is doing something weird, it's pointing up when I didn't touch it. Um, this is because the transmitters are still getting signals from the old tank, basically. All we need to do is add a number, so make this gun 3, say, and we'll also make the one on the mount gun 3. Let's rebound our controller, so right click and right click, and now everything should be back to working. So now there you have it. You have a nice working tank, which can be used by one person, that you can place whenever you want. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.